Welcome to a little bit of Calm and Crazy. If you are new, my name is Jennifer. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I am excited because I am sharing with you my top 15 Dollar Tree farmhouse DIYs. These are in no particular order. I just grabbed my favorites, put them all together, and I'm excited to share them with you. Now, if you enjoy easy DIYs and budget decor, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. I would hate for you to miss any of my future uploads. Also, I am on Instagram. It is a little bit of common crazy over there, just like it is here on Instagram. I love sharing with you a little bit more behind the scenes, also a little bit more personal. So if that sounds good to you, come and say hi to me. Without any further ado, let's get into it. For this project, you will just need a cylinder base, two plates, some rope, E6000, as well as a hot glue gun. So to start off, you just take your hot glue and just take it around your cylinder base and attach your rope all the way around from the top to the, from the bottom to the top. And then once you get to the very top, you make sure that you finish it off with a little hot glue to make sure it's completely secure. After that, you take your E6000 to the top all the way around the, the very rim of it, flip it over and attach that to your plate. And then you take the E6000 on the bottom all the way around the rim as well as in the center. Place your plate on top of that and then you are just going to let that sit there and let it dry. I let it sit kind of just overnight to make sure that it is completely dry and that is it. It is completely done and ready for you to decorate. I have had so much fun decorating this for the different holidays and seasons. It's definitely been one of my favorite pieces that I have had in my home over the last year. For this project, you will need three of these boxes that came from Dollar Tree, one set of the mini clay pots, they do come in a pack of three, and some floral. Here I have some mums, they're 97 cents from Walmart, but of course you can use some Dollar Tree floral as well. To start off with, you're gonna remove that backing from each of the boxes, and I'm using my favorite Fisker's craft knife in order to do that. I'm just scoring around the inside of the box and loosen it up, and then I'll flip it over and I'll even score on the back side, and then I will just pop it out. I also go ahead and I remove the little hanging part. Now, you can unscrew it if you want to, but honestly, it just pops right off. Now I'm going in again with my Fisker craft knife and just a screwdriver and I'm just cleaning up that back of the box, any adhesive or paper that got left behind because this will be left open because it will have like a 360 view once everything is completed and I just want it to look nice and clean. After that, I went in with Waverly's chalk paint and plaster and I painted all three of the boxes all the way around, making sure that they had a nice clean coat. Once they set up and dry, now it was time to put my boxes together. To put this all together, I'm starting off with some wood glue in order to stack my boxes. I just place it right onto the center and then I'm angling my boxes. So I angle the bottom one direction and I am using some wood clamps in order to hold this while it dries. Dollar Tree does now sell these little clips. I think they come with six in a set and they have little pink handles. They are sold with their crafter square. That is what it's called, right? Crafter Square? Anyway, you can get those. That would also work for this instead. Now, on this top box, you see that I angled it in a different direction. That will help it so that it balances better. Once this is glued together, I just leave it alone and I let it completely dry. Once it's completely dried, I'm going in now with my E6000 and my little clay pots. I put the E6000 on the pot and it just placed the pot right in the middle of each of the boxes but it's still just slightly wobbly, so I do go in with some wood just to keep it balanced while it's drying. I didn't want it to fall over, I wanted to make sure that it stayed up. But to give me that extra secureness that I wanted with the balancing, I am going in with these tumbling tower pieces. I went ahead and I painted them with that same um, chalk paint and plaster, and then I'm using the wood glue again to attach them to that bottom box. Once that dried, now it's time to finish up my stacking planting tower and I put a piece of floral foam in each one of my little what are those called clay pots and then I take the mums I use my wire cutters in order to snip them off their bunches I put five mums in each pot this is one of those pieces that I think is great for either indoor or outdoor decor. I chose to put it as part of my outdoor decor. It's sitting on my table outside and I absolutely love that it. it helps give it a little bit of height in its decor. 
For the base of this project, I'm using a Dollar Tree drinking dispenser. All you need to do is go ahead and remove the dispenser part. And then we're gonna take some black acrylic paint and just paint right where the dispenser part was and a little bit outside of that area because we need to have that to be completely covered. You might need to go in with two coats in order to make sure that it is opaque enough. To create the beehive bee skep, we're going to be covering it with rope and you can get this from the Dollar Tree. Luckily for me, my friend Frances was sweet enough and she gave me this huge thing of rope and I am so excited to have this. To make sure that the hot glue sticks to the container, I'm gonna completely cover it in some duct tape. I actually got this tip from Megan over on Glue Guns and Roses and it's such a fabulous tip, so I'm so grateful to have it. So I just take it and I wrap it everywhere except for, except for where I covered it with the black paint. I even make sure that I cover the top. Once it's complete, co completely covered in duct tape, now it is time to start adding our rope. So to begin with, I need to do the opening to the beehive. And so I'm taking a piece of rope and I'm just doing a double stack of rope. I don't know if that makes sense. And this is going to be my placement for that opening. So I just take it around, I add the hot glue and I twist it. And once I have my double stacked of rope, I add hot glue to it and then I glue it straight down onto my container. Honestly, the hardest part about doing the entire beehive will be around the opening as well as kind of like the neck of the beehive. And they're not even that hard but it's not quite as fast as doing the rest of it because you are kind of, not kind of, you are cutting, or at least I chose to cut because I wanted my rope to stay straight. And so as I was going around, every time I got back to the opening, I would cut my rope and hot glue it to secure it down and then start with a new piece of rope and then go around again. And same thing, once I got back to the opening again i would cut the rope again secure it down and i kept that process going once i finally cleared the ring then i could just keep wrapping it around and i didn't have to stop now when you go in at the neck it's a little bit different it's not necessarily hard it's just you just go in it's not that big of a deal and you just keep the rope going up and then you also just cover up the top Keep going around, adding your hot glue and covering it. Once you've completely covered everything, I added one more good dab of glue in the center and then press that last piece down. To create the top, I did the exact same thing that I did for the opening. I did two layers of rope and created like a little rope ring and then I hot glued that and secured that onto the very top of my beehive. And then I went in with some hot glue and some rope and I started placing that inside of that ring. So I use that ring kind of as like a barrier so that I had a placement for my rope to stay, if that makes sense, so that it wouldn't go extended past that point. So I just kind of went around and then once I got to the same height as my original, I went in with another piece of rope that I folded over, hot glued it closed, and then I hot glued it down. And that became kind of what looked like the little handle. Now I will tell you, I would never lift it up from that because I think it could still fall apart. And then I just continued to add hot glue around that to make it look like I was nice and secure. So I just kept wrapping that around. Now to give it a polished look, I went in with some more rope around my ring so that you wouldn't see those little edges that I cut as I was coming around that in the beginning. So I just wanted to kind of cover up those little raw edges. It really is so simple to create a beehive or a bee skep and you can use so many different shapes in order to do it. Not only do I think it's really cute and fun for like spring and summer, but I think it would look adorable in a baby's nursery. For this project, I created this printable, which is absolutely free, and I will have it linked below in the description box for you. Besides the printable, I also am using a Waverly's chalk paint in the color Mineral, and then I am using a picture frame. Now this is one of the more narrow ones that you can get from Dollar Tree, and it measures six by 11. It does come in different colors as well as different prints inside. The size of it I just thought looked 
and fit the size of a bathroom door really well. And here it is comparing it to a regular eight by 10 picture frame. So taking the chalk paint, I'm using the ruler and I'm drawing lines to create kind of like a wood look across the print. Now I did print this onto cardstock because cardstock definitely can hold up to the paint better than a regular printed paper. Well, once I drew the line, I did go over it with a paper towel to just make sure I got off any excess paint that might have been a little bit heavy and to do a little bit of extra blending. Each of my lines after the very first one, which I used the width of the ruler, I went in after that and I made the distance an inch and a quarter. So I would mark it out both on the top and the bottom of the paper. And then I would use the ruler again to create that line going from the top and the to the bottom of the paper. And I continued doing an inch and a quarter all the way across the paper until I had my lines all the way across the paper. Once I did have all my lines on the paper, I went in with a Dollar Tree brush and some more of the mineral chalk paint and very carefully with a dry brush went over in just different random spots on the paper and added some more texture and some more grain wood-like lines. I don't know how to explain that. That's the best way I can explain it along the lines that I had previously painted onto the paper. Now I'm not as concerned about doing the very edges because I will be trimming those off in order for this to pit fit inside of the picture frame. Once I had my grains onto my paper, I then went back in with a paintbrush and I went over the entire paper without adding any more product onto the brush and then just give it a light stroking to give it a little bit more of an aged look. Now it's time to go ahead and trim the paper down to fit inside of the picture frame. Again, this picture frame is a six by 11, but you can use whatever size picture frame that you want. It will fit in an eight by 10 if that's the size that you prefer. And of course, whatever color of picture frame you prefer to use as well. I chose to put the glass behind the print, but you could do it either way. I'm using these Velcro command strips in order to hang this onto my bathroom door. I have a bathroom door that is at the end of a hall with a bunch of doors, and it is always confusing to people to know which door to go through, and now they will have a sign to help them to know which door to go through. <laughs> For this project, I'm going in with three of these glass stars from Dollar Tree as well as some white spray paint. I'm using the Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte in white. It's my absolute favorite white spray paint. I always get questions about my spray tint. I will have it linked down for you below. And I also get questions about the Lazy Susan. My husband made it. You guys, it makes all the difference when you're painting to paint on a Lazy Susan. Once it's completely dried, I'm going in with this Waverly Wax and Antique and it will give it a little bit more of an aged and give it a lot more dimension. So I'm taking the wax uh, first along the edges on the inside and then on, on the outside and then on the inside and then I'm going in with a paper towel and just wiping it off, getting off the excess and as I do that, I'm just kind of blending it in at the same time. And so I'm kind of going in on high points and low points, adding wax, wiping it away. And I'm just gonna keep doing this until I get as much distressing as I want. There's no exact science to this, but I would suggest that you start off with a little bit and then just add until you're happy. Because if you go in with a little too much, you can't really take it away. You can always repaint it if it's really bad, but just start off slow and then just keep adding. But honestly, you guys, this has become one of my favorite pieces. I use it all the time. It's a great accent piece. I originally created this for 4th of July, but it's great for Christmas. And honestly, I don't know if it's just because I live in Texas. I use it all year round. For this project, I'm taking a tray from the Dollar Tree and again in with my favorite white spray paint, the Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte. I'm just gonna spray paint the tray completely in white. After that, I'm going in with some rope, the same length for each side, tying a knot on the ends so that I can create some handles. After I have my knots tied, simply use some hot glue in order to secure that onto the sides of the tray. And there you have a super simple and easy tray. And if you have been around my channel, it should not surprise you. I can never have enough trays. I absolutely love them. 
for this project, I'm starting off with one of these boxes from Dollar Tree and removing that center piece and then taking a 220 grit sandpaper in order to smooth out that center piece. After that, I go ahead and I do remove that little hanging bit off the back. It does just pop off or if you want to, you can screw it off. Either way, it's not on there very securely. So this is a wooden candlestick that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. It was originally $1.99 and I did use a coupon with that. You could also use the glass candlestick that you can get from Dollar Tree. I just like the height of this better and I like wood with wood. And that's just a personal preference. Removed the metal part in order to make it more flush so that when we glue it to the box, then it will have a better contact. The paint I'm using on this project is Waverly's chalk paint in white as well as a black acrylic paint. To start off, I'm painting the candlestick with the black in order to give it the same base color as the shadow box. Now taking the white chalk paint, I am going around the edges of the shadow box. This is in case the paper doesn't completely come to the edges, then you won't notice any of the green poking through. So it doesn't really matter how far you go in, you just want to make sure that you are covering your edges. Taking the same chalk paint, I'm going around the shadow box and giving it a dry brushing technique all the way around, just trying to tone down that black a little bit. I still want the black to seep through, but I don't want it as stark of a color as it was before. Now, if you are looking to add a pop of color somewhere, this would be a really great place to add a pop of color instead of leaving it white and black. And this would be really cute in any color that you choose. And these boxes do come in different colors as well. And so you might find something that absolutely coordinates with your color scheme and style better. Once the candlestick dried, I did the exact same thing to the candlestick. I just took the brush around the candlestick and did just swipes of it around, adding that white all the way around until I got as much of the white onto the candlestick as I wanted. Now remember, it is better to just go in slowly and add more and build more. And you can always add, it is so much easier to add than it is to take away. As you can see a couple of times, I did end up with areas where I added a little bit more than I wanted, but if you do, there are always ways to fix it or you can learn to make things happy accidents. I don't like to leave things unfinished, so I took the same white chalk paint and I painted the bottom of the shadow box to cover it completely up and to give it that finished look. Once all the paint dried, I did go in with a piece of sandpaper and sand any of the edges just to soften up some of those paint edges that I had, especially if I got a little bit too much paint in any particular spot. This is a paper that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. It originally is 69 cents, but I did get it for a for dollar, which is what I always suggest, never pay full price for it. You're gonna cut out a piece that will fit inside your box. Applying a thin coat of Mod Podge onto the bottom of the box in order to secure the paper down. Now, once you have your paper down, you will press it and make sure that it's completely secure and let it set up and dry. And once it has dried completely, then you can go in and add another layer of Mod Podge on top of the paper in order to seal it in. And again, this will make it water resistant, but not waterproof. Using some wood glue, you are going to combine the candlestick and the shadow box in order to create like an elevated tray or an elevated candle holder. Once you have placed the candlestick in the middle of the shadow box, you just need to let it set there and dry. I like to leave it there for a good 24 hours to make sure that it is completely set before I do anything else to it. I absolutely love this. I love the way that it turned out. It is a perfect candle holder, but I also like it for an elevated tray. Such an easy piece to have in like a guest bathroom for them to place like their rings and their earrings. I know I'm always looking for a place to put my rings and my earrings when I'm visiting somebody. And this is like that perfect solution. I hope you like it as much as I do. 
here I have one of those Dollar Tree little wooden boxes. I absolutely love this. This is actually a smaller one. Of course, I removed that centerpiece and there was a little tiny nail. I had to get that out as well and making sure that center area is as smooth as possible. After that, I'm going in with Waverly's chalk paint in white and I paint the inside as well as the outside of the box. I want everything to be a nice, crisp, white and fresh color. Once I have the paint on the box, I did go in just with one coat. That's really all it needed. I just made sure that it's set up, it dried. Now it's time to go in with those little tumbling tower pieces, eight pieces all together, and I glued two pieces together to make a total of four sets. I am using wood glue to do that, but you could also use like a super glue if you wanted to. After that, I'm going in with Waverly's Wax and Antique, and I like to use this more like a stain when I'm doing it like this anyway. And I just brush it on and then I take a paper towel and I wipe off the excess. I go ahead and I do that to all four of the joined pieces because I'm creating the little legs. Once all four pieces are done, I go in with my wood glue again and I glue them to the four corners of the box, creating a cute little stand. This is great to either be a plant holder, a candle holder. It is just super cute and as you can see here, I loved using it on a tear tray. For this project, I am using some Dollar Tree rope and as you can see, it actually comes twisted with three different pieces. So you're going to unwind it and just be using one of the three pieces. I'm also using a medicine bottle in order to do this. I was making, this is kind of a play off of the basket ideas that you see floating around, but I wanted a smaller version. And so anything smaller that you might have, a smaller jar would work. Just kind of think creatively. I was going for the shape and this happened to be the perfect shape for what I wanted. And this gives you a good size reference for what it would be like compared to the 16 ounce of a Waverly chalk paint. So I decided to go ahead and remove the label by using my heat gun in order to do that. It does leave kind of that sticky tacky adhesive behind, which really actually works in your favor because it grabs onto the rope when we go to wrap it around. So that is just like an added bonus. So in order to secure the rope to the bottle, I'm just using some hot glue. And now I make sure that I have hot glue on the bottom in order to secure that rope. And I make sure the hot glue goes all the way around the bottom. And then after that, I just wrap the rope around. Now the sticky residue will make sure that the rope stays in place. I just bunch it up with my fingers to make sure it's like a nice tight fit. And then I don't really need hot glue again until I get to where it starts to curve over towards that top. Once I get to that point, then I start using hot glue again to make sure that the rope is staying where I want it. When I get to the very top of the bottle, I make sure that I go just slightly over the top of the rim in order to hide the top of the bottle so that you do not see it and it's completely covered, creating that faux basket, vase, whatever you wanna call this look to this bottle. For some more added visual interest, I went ahead and taped off the basket and I'm going in with Waverly's chalk paint in white and I'm just painting a little white strip right there in the center. Once I painted completely around that center strip, I went ahead and removed that painter's tape and let the paint dry. And then I added some of those Dollar Tree florals that I had earlier into it. And I think that this is a very cute little roped base, basket, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> the longer flower and gardens galvanized tin, as well as three pint sized jars with a regular mouth. I'm also using some Spanish moss and some flowers. Now I'm giving you two options on the flowers. I grabbed some lavender from the Dollar Tree, as well as the lavender from Walmart. I actually prefer the ones from Walmart. I just think they are a little bit wispier and those are 97 cents each. I am also using some twine and some Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. To begin, I just paint all three of my jars with the chalk paint. Now I do make sure that my paintbrush strokes kind of go all in the same direction. And once I have painted all three jars, I set them aside and I let them dry. With chalk paint, they do dry fairly quickly. So you probably only need to let them dry for an hour tops. 
Once I dry, I go in with a very fine grit sandpaper and I sand, especially where there's any sort of texture or wording. And then I also go into a couple other just random spots and kind of sand the paint off just to give it a good distressed look. After that, I take my twine, I wrap it around about five times, and then I tie a cute little bow. I do this to all three of the jars. And this project is so simple and easy. After that, I go in with my Spanish moss and I just break it up and I fit it into the bottom of the container. Now this is so, because it's more narrow on the bottom and the jars fit better when they're raised up just a little bit and the Spanish moss allows them to do that. So that's why I'm going with this. If you wanna use something else, you absolutely can. So I place all three jars. Now I'm giving you two options on how you can use this. I think this would be such a cute utensil caddy, especially for a barbecue. You can add your knives your spoons and your forks, and you are ready to have just a really fun party. Now for option number two, of course, we're gonna add in some spring flowers. I did tell you that I would show you what they look like with the Walmart, or the Dollar Tree flowers, and so I just kind of bent those so that they would fit into the jars, and maneuvered the leaves and stuff and flowers and fluff those up. But those are harder to find and I actually like the ones from Walmart better for this project and so I preferred going in with those. So I did cut those down so they would fit and I think that they turned out beautiful. I absolutely love this. For this next project I'm using an 8x10 stretch canvas as well as this clear colored sink mat. To start off with, I am removing the canvas from the wood. Now I have tried to do it where I remove the staples. I can't do it without causing injury and bleeding to myself. So this time I just went in with my craft knife. I cut a round in order to just get the canvas off and I left the staples in. I found that that was just the easiest way. I did go in with my pliers and remove the extra canvas that was around just because I didn't want that extra canvas to interfere with anything else. But again, I just left the staples where they were. After that, I just kind of laid the canvas right on top or the wood on top of the clear mat to get an idea of the size of the mat that I needed and took my scissors and trimmed that down so that it would fit behind. And then I went in with my staple gun and on the same side where the staples already were, I stapled that clear sink mat right onto the wooden frame. Now, if you have any extra that is hanging off still, go ahead and trim that up. You don't want that sticking out on your edges. Once that was done, I went in with this white spray paint and I gave it a nice, easy coat of spray paint. I wanted to make sure that the clear mat was covered, but I didn't want the frame to be completely white. I wanted some of that neutral wood to be able to still pop through. To decorate this, I'm keeping it really easy. I'm just using the floral pick from Dollar Tree as well as some Dollar Tree wired burlap in order to create a bow. So I'm taking the burlap ribbon and I'm cutting off a fairly large piece and then just folding that in half. And then I'm taking a smaller piece and cutting that in half and that will be the tails that I will attach to the bow in just a little bit. Now I'm taking a piece of twine, just wrapping it around several times and then tying that off into a knot to secure my bow. In order to attach the tails onto my bow, I'm just using some hot glue and securing those right into the middle of the bow and that way I get little bow tails onto the bow. After that, I go in with a piece of twine, I doubled it up and I added some hot glue and that is how I will be attaching this to the mat. I guess that's the best way to put it. So I added a little bit of hot glue onto the flower in order to attach the bow to that. And then I'm sticking the twine through the holes and then tying that off into a bow. Cause I didn't want to tie it into a knot that way if I wanted to take this off, then I could easily take this off and then use this again later for something else. After I did that, I wanted to dovetail my ends by just cutting at an angle. I always think that is a nice added touch. And there you have a super cute, this is definitely really farmhousey, but I love it. I think it is darling. It is really fresh and bright and white. I adore this. So I have this sad little wreath from the Dollar Tree. I know it's just a dollar, but I always wish that they were just not quite so sad. One day my son was helping me take apart some older wreaths and he cut the twine by accident, leaving me with this undone wreath. So I decided to go ahead and undo 
a perfectly good wreath as well and combine the two wreaths together. So it's so easy, you just snip the twine, it comes off super easy. And then I just stacked them on top of each other, got a new piece of twine, I tied it into the knot on, a back, on the back side of it, and then I just took that twine, wrapped it around, and then finished it with a knot at the end in the exact same place that I had started. And I love this thicker wreath that I was able to create for just $2. So I dug through my florals and I pulled out a couple of different ones, this green one and a white one. I believe the green one came from Walmart and the white one came from Dollar Tree. I'm not exactly sure, but I kind of was going more for a neutral color with this one. Again, any floral will work. I just snipped them a little bit longer and then I just took them and I stuck them just straight into the twigs of the wreath. No hot gluing at all. So when I want to go back and undo this and redo it for another time, it will be super easy to do that. I will not damaging my wreath. This is so easy and I just took them around, adding them wherever and then on the back side, if any of the stems were a little bit long and sticking out, I just kind of bent them, curled them and tucked them right on in. So I am using this Tiki Bar sign that I got from Dollar Tree last summer. But if you have another Dollar Tree sign, that would be fantastic. If you're keeping this indoors, you could also use foam board or even cardboard. I start by taking a 60 grit sandpaper and sanding the glitter off the front of the sign. Now I'm doing this because I plan on painting both sides of the sign. Again, I like to have a finished product, so I like my fronts and my backs to look good. If you're being super thrifty, you could always save the glitter and use it in a different project. Going in with Waverly's chalk paint in white again, I paint the front and the back of the sign. Once the paint was completely dried, I went in with my Cricut and I cut Bless Our Home. Now this is the Four Season Home Decor font. It's my favorite font in Cricut right now. If you don't have an electric die cutter, you could also go in with a Sharpie, with paint. You could use stickers to do this. Do not feel like you need an electric die cutter in order to do this. This is such a basic and easy sign. To attach my sign to my wreath, I'm going in with some hemp cord that I had. You could also use twine or even some rope, some thinner rope to do this. And I'm just taking it through the original holes, knotting that, then wrapping it around the wreath in order to keep that secure, and then taking it back in through the last hole and giving it one more knot. Super simple, but a fun way to hold it. And again, I'm not damaging the wreath by using any hot glue. This really is such a simple and easy wreath to make and what's so great is I can't believe I never thought about combining two of those wreaths together before. I think it made all the difference. For this project, I am using this cute little mason jar sign from the Dollar Tree, but I'm going to be using the back side of it and cutting off the handle, so just find something that is a similar shape. To start off, I am removing the fruit from the front of the sign. Now this is a little extra, you probably don't have to do this, but I wanted to go ahead and remove this. I thought about trying to make this a double-sided sign and I might at some point, and that is why I chose to go ahead and do this. So now you see that I'm using my box cutter and I'm going in here and I'm just scoring the handle because I'm gonna be removing the handle. I go in with a very light hand to score at first and I will score both the front of the handle as well as the back of the handle. And then I go in a little bit deeper and with a little bit more force after I have it scored. And that keeps my blade in line and it helps me to stay where I need to stay. And that, I find is the easiest way to do this. I really like using a box cutter for this kind of thing. I feel like I have a little bit more control when I use the box cutter. So I do this with the handle and I do the exact same thing with the straw. I remove both of those. To smooth out my edges after getting them off, I do go in with a piece of sandpaper and just take it over the edges and that takes care of any rough edges. Now because I did say that I might make this a double-sided sign, I went ahead and I took some sandpaper to get rid of that glitter on that front side of the sign. Here you see that I'm using some wood filler to cover or fill in the holes where the sign was, uh, the string where the sign was originally hung from. I won't be using those holes and I don't like to have those just uh, wide open. Once that completely dries, I go in with some sandpaper to sand those so that they are flush with the rest of the sign. 
using some black acrylic paint or chalk paint or whatever you have on hand, go ahead and paint your sign completely, the back as well as the sides. Once it has dried, take a piece of paper and trace out your jar as best as you can. Now, the jar won't fit on the paper completely, so you won't get the top of it traced out, but you will get the main part of the jar. Now, this is a little extra. If you want a free hand, you'll see what I mean in a moment. You don't have to do this. This is for somebody that is not comfortable free handing, just a little extra suggestion or tip. So go ahead and cut that out and then you're actually going to trim inside and here's what you see i'm going to cut it down just a little bit the easiest way would be probably to fold this over in half and then trim it down so they match up but i did not do that i'm just trimming it down i'm eyeballing that so for you perfectionist i would just fold it in half so that your sides are equal and then you're gonna take this down and you're gonna use this as your template so that you know exactly where you want your lines to be. And here, let me show you what I'm talking about. Now you can place this down and trace around it so that you have an outline of where you want to go in with your white paint to do your little border of your jar. Again, you can freehand this. This is just for somebody that is not comfortable freehanding. So using some white paint, I'm using Waverly's chalk paint in white you're going to take a small detailed brush and you're going to go around those edges again free handing it or going where you outlined it already and you're going to trace out your jar now what you did not do was go over your lid so you will need to either freehand that or do something similar to what we did at the beginning and draw out a template for yourself and you will need to trace out your lid as well once you have your lid traced out now it is time to do a little bit more detailed work inside of your lid and you need to just take a screenshot of what i did right here so that you can see what i did that's the easiest way to know how to describe it because you're going to kind of have some random lines. There's also options online if you need to look at some other ideas if you don't like my lines as much. It's just some shorter lines and some longer lines that are coming across the lid to make it look like that mason jar. If you don't feel comfortable going straight in with the paint, then take a pencil and sketch out your lines first and do it that way because you can always erase. Now do remember that it is paint. If you make a mistake, you can go in with just a little bit of black paint to touch up anything that you did make a mistake with and fix any of those little painting boo-boos. Somehow I lost the clip of me adding the little light reflective line white line inside of the mason jar when I painted that one on but I did add that along that little top curve on the left hand side so that is the one other thing that I did add I hope that I have explained or showed this well enough for you to duplicate this on your own if you choose to do that when everything is painted and dry, then you can move on to the phrase that you're gonna put on your mason jar. And in my case, I am using this stencil that I also found at Dollar Tree. I loved this home sweet home. I was so excited to find this. For extra security, I went ahead and taped all four sides down. I did not want this moving. I'm going in with my little daubing sponge tool in order to stencil the chalk paint onto my sign. Now, as you will notice, I am not stenciling the little hearts that are in the corner. I did not want those. And because I don't like the texture that the little sponge gives, it's a little bumpy lumpy, I am going in with my paintbrush just to smooth that out in between each thing. So that's just a personal choice, a little extra. You don't have to do that. So once I have everything all painted, the home sweet home, I then go ahead and I peel up the tape on the three sides just to make sure that I'm not moving anything to be a little extra careful. And then I peel back the stencil and oh, that is so satisfying. Ah, look at that. I think that, look, I'm so excited. I love how this is coming together. I am so excited. Once that has set up and dried, I go over it with some Mod Podge to protect it. Last year I used the sign on a wreath on my front door and I thought that that was super fun and adorable. But this year I decided to go ahead and put it in my kitchen and I absolutely love it in there as well. It is just so versatile. For this super simple project, I have a white 8x10 frame from the Dollar Tree as well as the large black stickers and these smaller black stickers. Now I love the Fresh Baked Pies signs from the Dollar Tree. 
well, not from the Dollar Tree. I love the signs, but I cannot pay the price. And so I knew that I could recreate it using all Dollar Tree products. Removing everything other than the glass from the frame, because of course that is where I'm placing the stickers. So to begin with, I'm using the larger stickers in order to do, or in order to spell out the word pies. So at first I like to flank with the P and the S because I can make sure that my letters are the same distance from the edges of my frame and then I can fill in with the I and the E. And then to make sure that everything is nice and straight, I go in with my ruler because as much as I like to pretend I can eyeball things, I am not that good of an eyeballer. Using something with a curved edge, I'm gonna use this to help me place my next set of letters, which I'm actually spelling out fresh baked. So using the tiny little letters and a ruler. Now you don't have to necessarily use the ruler. I just find it easier to go ahead and have all of my letters out prior to doing this. But if you prefer to go straight to, from your sticker sheet, by all means, do whatever you prefer to do. Now, what I'm using to help me with my edge is actually a lemon plate that I picked up from Dollar Tree, and it works perfectly, but anything with that kind of a shape would work just as well. When placing my letters and words down, you'll find that I find it easiest to actually start in a center. So with baked, I did start with a B and I worked my way from the center. But with fresh, I'm actually starting with the H and working my way from with, with the H all the way to the F. And that way I have that middle point is equal for both of the words. Once I have all my letters in place, I go ahead and I press them down. It honestly is just that simple. But the project is not finished yet. I wanted to make sure that I did not see those pesky little prongs on the other side. So I had and I removed the glass and I took my pliers and I pulled those out. Now you want to be careful with this because these frames are not real wood and it will split. So I do hold it and as I'm pulling. Then I went in with some E6000 and I took it around the edge of the frame where the glass would be sitting. I placed the glass right back inside and then I let it set up. It is that simple and this turned out so cute. I love this. I actually got the idea from a friend. She had something very similar that she had purchased and when I saw it, I knew that I could make it myself for so much less. I hope you honestly love this as much as I do. Not only do I love regular trays, but I also love tiered trays. So here are the supplies that I am using for this tiered tray. I have two of these chargers, as well as two of the glass candlesticks. I am using some E6000 and some Waverly chalk paint. I have it both in the white as well as in the ivory. I will also be using some rope and you will need your handy dandy hot glue gun. To start off with, I'm actually going to combine the two paints. The white was too white and the ivory was too yellow or too cream and I wanted a combination of the two. So combine the two and then I added some water to thin it out and mix that together. And then I brush those onto the chargers. Now. This is to give the chargers a, more of a, of a birch wood look. I know, am I stressing you out right here? Probably so, but I promise you I wanted it. I, the, gold, the gold just wasn't quite what I wanted. I definitely wanted more of a birch wood, but if you like the way that it was before and you wanted the gold, by all means, you could absolutely just skip this step. So once I painted them on, I'm going in with a dry paper towel and I'm just wiping off some of the excess paint using another paper towel so that my fingers don't stick to the paint. And I just kind of go back and forth and do this a few times. I add more paint in the areas that I took off too much and then I go back and I just keep going until I get the color thing, the color that I want. I do this to both of the chargers until I'm completely satisfied. I make sure that I even cover the sides of the charger and then I set them aside and I let them dry. While those are drying, I take my E6000 to the smaller part of the candlestick to the top part. I add it to the rim of the candlestick and then I flip the other candlestick on top of that and I connect the two, creating a little candlestick tower and I let that set up. 
Once you've let your E6000 set up a couple hours at least, preferably even overnight, now you can go in with some rope and hot glue and start securing your rope to your candlesticks to cover them up. I'm starting in the center. I actually got this idea from Megan from Glue Guns and Roses. She created a couple of rope candlesticks doing this exact same thing. So take the hot glue around the center, secure your rope there, and then you can just start wrapping your rope around. It is absolutely easier, and Megan stresses this as well, to start from the center and then work towards the edge, and then you'll come back again and take care of the other side. So just wrap it around, and then I only had to do a one little dab of hot glue when there's a little bitty lip, like halfway through, and then I didn't need hot glue again until I was finishing up the very last edge. Once I had this one side done, then I went ahead and I repeated the exact same thing on the other side. So starting where you left off, again I go in with hot glue in the center to secure that rope. I take it all the way around making sure that first bit of rope is absolutely secure. I want to make sure that it is good and tight or on there, whatever you want to call it. I don't want it going anywhere. So I do, I go with hot glue all the way around and then I can just start wrapping after I have that first little bit of hot glue on there. And when I get to that little bitty lip, I do have to add a little bit more hot glue to make sure that it stays on with that little lip. And then I can just keep wrapping it around again. I kind of push it down, you see there, as I'm wrapping and holding it and it will stay. This really seems to work out. The rope itself will hold itself will hold itself in place and you won't need to really worry about it again until you get to that very edge and then I start going in with some more hot glue just on that last little edge to make sure that the rope stays where it needs to as I'm going around. And again, I'm pushing the rope exactly along flush with the glass so that it will be even, but you will see that I'm about to change this up because I realized that this isn't gonna quite work in the end. As I cut my rope, I do cut it on an angle. I find that that helps it to blend in a little bit better and give it a smoother edge. So that is my one tip is to cut your rope at an angle on your ends and then make sure that they are nice and secure down. So this is the one thing I would do before is I realized that I probably needed a solid base. So I went in with some foam board, I cut out a circle, and then I cut within the circle so it would fit onto the bottom of my candlestick. And I am securing that with hot glue onto the bottom of my candlesticks. I'm doing that to both sides of my candlesticks with the hot glue. And then I have to go in with another piece of rope around the foam board to cover it up. And it would of course been so much easier to have gone ahead and done this in the first place. It just didn't occur to me that I would probably need more of a base in order to, to secure the candlesticks onto the charger. So that's what my job is, is to find all the mistakes beforehand so that you don't have to make them during. The glue that I'm using to secure them together is actually a one minute professional construction glue. It's super, super strong, but you could use a really high temp hot glue as well. To me, that's one of the best glues that I have found in order to secure it. So I am being super generous, adding a ton of glue on to the candlestick and placing it onto the charger and right into the center. And then I'm placing more hot glue onto the top of the candlestick around the, the edges to make sure that my edges are nice and secure and then a ton of it into the center as well. And then placing the charger right on top of that. Again, trying to make sure that my charger is lined up and in the center so that everything is nice and even. And then I just let that hot glue set up and then it is ready to be decorated and displayed however you want. I love this and I love all the different ways that I will be able to style it for the different seasons and holidays and just everyday use. I just am so excited. I 
love the look of birchwood and the fact that I was able to do a faux style just makes me so giddy. I would love that I don't have to rank these, but I do want to know if you have a favorite. Let me know that in the comments below. If you are looking for some more farmhouse decor, I have you covered. Here's another couple of videos for you to check out as well. I love thrifting and that is another way to keep things on a budget. Now, make sure you've hit that subscribe button, give this video a big thumbs up, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!